In this tutorial, we're going to talk about primary keys and what are the different ways in which Hibernate provides support for primary keys. We have defined a primary key in our uh, previous tutorial itself. I have actually simplified the code here. I've, um, I've kind of removed all the other properties. I just have uh, the ID and the username alone just for simplicity. So here we had already defined this at ID annotation to denote this particular field as the primary key. And uh, we had given the field a value of one and uh, you know a simple username in order to you know fill that property value. And then we had saved that using Hibernate. Now, what does this at ID do? First of all, it created a primary key um, column in the table and it you know it created a column for this user id and then it denoted it as a primary key and then you can use this primary key for fetching data that's again another thing we saw in a previous tutorial we can pass the value of the key to a session.get and then we can get the object itself now we'll look at what are the other ways in which hibernate supports primary keys uh, before we get into what hibernate uh, supports we'll have a quick discussion about a natural versus a surrogate key. And what is a natural key and what is a surrogate key? Let's say, for example, in your application, you have a column that you know for sure has distinct values and then you know for sure that it's mandatory. Take, for example, a user registration um, application and you have people registering by giving out their email address and the first and last name, all those details. Say your business rule dictates that every user needs to have an email ID and then every user has to provide a distinct unique email ID when they're registering. You cannot have duplicate email IDs. You cannot have two different records that has the same email ID. So in that case, we can have the email address as a primary key. So such columns which actually are uh, there for a business reason, but then you assign one of them to be the primary key. So such keys are called natural keys. Uh, the other option is to have something called as a surrogate key, in which case you um, you don't know if uh, any any column can be marked as unique. You don't have a column that can be marked as unique or you anticipate that it, that could change in the future. So in that case, what you do is you add a new column and uh, the purpose of the column is to entirely act as a primary key alone. It does not carry any business significance, but you need to have a separate column just to have, you know, just to, just for it to act as a key. So in that case, that's called as a surrogate key. So it's kind of like having a serial number column in front of your table. The serial number column does not serve any other purpose, does not carry any data apart from the fact that it's marking out all the different rows as separate and it has a unique number for each. So having these, uh, now, now that we have these two types of primary keys, we'll look at how Hibernate supports each. Uh, now what's the key that we are using over here? We have uh, something called as user ID and we have a username. Now, if the user ID is specifically for the purpose of uh, declaring a primary key and then it does not have a business use, then yes, this would be a surrogate key. But if it has a business use or you you know it's a it's a login ID, for example, and you're making making a login ID as a primary key, then that would be a natural key because a login ID is also used for other purposes like authentication and stuff. So if we are having a natural key, it would make sense for us to provide the value because it's of business significance. We need to know what the value is and we need to be able to control it. But if it's a surrogate key, then we can ask Hibernate to do the job for us if, because it really doesn't matter for us what the value is going to be. Uh, you know, it, it, for uh, as far as we know, it can be the, you know, the last value plus one. That would work as well. But we just need to make sure that it's... Uh, it just has to be. It just has to be unique, and uh, it has to be mandatory. It, has, it you know it cannot be optional. It cannot be null. So these two things are something that Hibernate can manage for us. We can tell Hibernate to generate a surrogate key for us whenever we're using such a surrogate key. Say for example, this user ID 
happens to be a surrogate key. I've just in a, you know added this value here, but I don't need it for any other reason apart from um, using it as an ID. So in that case, we can ask Hibernate to generate this value for us every time we do an insert. I don't have to be, I don't have to create this ID every time. I don't have to pass it to Hibernate. Hibernate can automatically generate and uh, manage the newly created objects keys. So say I have to insert a new user, all I have to do is to set the username and then Hibernate will take care of creating the right user ID for me. Now if I had to uh, supply the surrogate key myself, then what would I have to do? I have to first look up what is the last um, surrogate key ID that, I, that was created. So probably we have 500 users and the last uh, user ID that was inserted was 500. So I will have to add one to it and then insert user ID 501. So this is something that uh, I don't have to do if I use Hibernate's help. Uh, Hibernate will do that work and it'll generate a primary key for me. So I can use that functionality of Hibernate by specifying another annotation here called at generated value. What add generated value means is it's asking Hibernate to generate this value for me. I'm not going to generate this myself. Now Hibernate is going to look at the data type of this uh, property. It's an integer. So it's going to generate a new integer for me and then it's going to add that value. So now I don't have to pass a user ID value. I'm just going to set the username and then when I do a save, it's going to save the value. So just to demonstrate that, let me add one more object here. I'll call this user2. And uh, let's say user2.set username second user. And I'll save both of them. I'll save session dot save user2. Okay, let's save and run this. So there you can see it has, uh, it has inserted these two values. But notice what's happening here. It's done a next val of Hibernate sequence. So what's happening is Hibernate is maintaining a sequence internally and it's generating the user ID depending on the sequence. It just gets the next value of that sequence and then uses that next value to insert the user ID. This was not happening before because we used to pass the user ID, but now that we have marked it as a generated value, Hibernate is getting this value from the sequence and then it's inserting it. Now let's test the data. There you go, user ID, one and two has been inserted with first user and second user. Now this generated value is, has something called as a strategy. So um, there is this configuration called strategy equals. Now here you can see there are four values here belonging to the generation type enumeration we have auto, identity, sequence, and table. Now what's happening if you do not specify any strategy is that it's going for strategy as generation type dot auto. Now what is this auto generation type? It just means that we will let Hibernate make a decision as to what is the strategy it needs to use in order to come up with these unique primary keys. Now you can have more control over this. You can specify one of these other options here. So the other options being identity, sequence, and table. So identity means that it's going to use, Hibernate is going to use identity columns and uh, it's going to generate that. Now what is identity column? It's a feature which provided in some of the databases. It's not a generic feature that's available in all the databases. I believe SQL Server and uh, MySQL 
I, I could be wrong, but I think those two databases provide this identity column feature. So if you're using one of those databases, you can you can say generation type is identity, in which case Hibernate is going to use that feature of the database in order to come up with the unique primary keys. Uh, sequence is, uh, is something, you know, it's called as a sequence high-low in Hibernate. So sequence has, uh, it uses the sequence object in the database in order to come up with the unique key. I think that's what's happening here. Uh, it's using a Hibernate sequence object. A sequence object is something that you can have in the database in order to maintain sequences. And uh, you can use that, you can add sequence. You can, when you say a next val, it automatically pulls up the next value and then updates a the sequence so that uh, subsequent next vals pull up the next data. So it's something that databases manage by themselves and you can use sequence to come up with unique, pro unique uh, values for the primary key. Table is another option. You can have uh, a separate table and uh, that table will have a record of what is the last used primary key so that you can increment it and uh, get the next value. So again, if you use this table option, Hibernate is going to create a separate table and use that for generating the primary key. So uh, most of these depend on the database that you are using. So auto is the recommended option. If you use generation type or auto, that means that it, you know, you're going to leave it to Hibernate to make the best decision depending on the database that you're connecting to.